Google just hired back an AI rock star for $2.7 billion, further to my, to my point so just a little bit earlier. They just hired back a guy called Noam Shazir, who left earlier, uh, left Google earlier out of frustration. And so in order to kind of bolster their bench and uh, get him back inside, they acquire, they basically paid him a crap ton of money. It's like a, basically like a signing bonus to come join Google again, $2.7 billion. So I don't know how much there is to say about this exactly, except to say what I just said earlier, which is there is a small group of very well-known people in this case, a 48 year old engineer. And, uh, those people are worth their weight in not even gold in, yeah, in, in, in like something quite a bit more valuable than gold, uh, maybe in Bitcoin token, <laughs> in Bitcoin. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, is there anything more to say on this Amir than what we just talked about in the, in the context of open AI executives? I think if you live in the Silicon Valley, you run into these people from time to time, these people that have the capabilities that are magical or maybe just 1% of all top engineers actually get there. When we at Slack had this moment where IBM was buying our, our stuff and all the big enterprises start using our stuff, we ran into scalable problems in, in a way that no startup that is not going like crazy up and to the right is running. So we stole an infrastructure engineer from Facebook who actually dealt with crazy scale issues. So I think like if you work in the Silicon Valley, you run into these people that have very, very specific skill set that only a very small portion of the world has. And it usually is around like subject matter expertise around scale, around AI, around any other very, very specific technology. I have a friend who's doing that out of uh, a place where he's basically retired on uh, garbage collection of Java. So I think every... Every topic has this like very, very top 1% that companies would pay unlimited amount of zeros to get that person in because they're not the 10 Xers, they're the thousand Xers. They drive your business thousand times more than any other employee. So they're actually worth that money. This is a really good topic just to talk about as a little bit of an EDU subject, right? An educational subject for founders listening. We've mentioned this on the show before, both on React episodes and EDU episodes the value of a 10 Xer and the value of a, of a thousand Xer, right? You know, Steve Jobs is famous for saying, great people are not just a little bit better, they're a lot better, right? A lot, a lot better. And, and if you've listened through the back catalog, you probably heard me say a few times, I've seen teams do things in a week that other teams took months and yep. months to do. And they did it worse over those months than the team that did it in a week. And, I, and I'm always quick to say that's not an exaggeration. That's not like hyperbole, right? No, no, no. Yeah, all the time. You say that, you know, these people are very valuable and, and companies are willing to pay a lot of money for them. I would say in my experience, Amir, outside of Silicon Valley and outside of certain circles, that's not true. They're not willing to or don't know how to identify these 10Xers and 100Xers. And they don't know just how much they're worth. And so I've been involved in conversations, hiring conversations where people would say, well, geez, you know, they're asking for a really a lot more money than other peers in their function, right? And we just can't justify that or it won't be fair. And we'll have to start paying others more than, than they're being paid now. And all of this kind of egalitarian nonsense that doesn't make any sense. It's so stupid. So, so stupid. You know, I've also been on the record on this show in the past to say, I think actually there is a 1% of product managers and product leaders out there. And they're a little bit like the top directors in the world because product management is kind of like directing a film or conducting an orchestra. There is the very best and then there's everybody else. And again, that's not a very egalitarian or popular or, you know, democratic thing for me to say, but I believe it to be true. And so when you find incredible product leaders, incredible engineering leaders, incredible people that can unlock incredible growth and momentum and pay off for you or, or help you avoid incredible opportunity cost and differentiation from your competitors, man, you need to think seriously about how much that's worth to your company. I actually tweeted the other day, how much is success worth? Or in this case, you know, how much is massively increasing the probability of success 
and the rate of execution worth. I mean, it's close to priceless for many companies, especially if the company doesn't have those many, have many 10Xers in there amongst their ranks. And so, yeah, very, very valuable. A hundred percent. And like, if you look at it, another thing that people don't think about is that those 10Xers, those uh, thousand Xers, they bring with them other 10Xers. Bingo. 10Xers like to work with each other. Thousand Xers like to work with each other so that you're not just making your company better by one person. You're basically changing the DNA of your company. It's just a little bit like not firing a toxic person. Everybody becomes toxic after a while. If you hire a very, very productive person, people look up to them. People moved in a different velocity. It's the best thing that you could do for your company. And the reverse, if you tolerate low performers or assholes, as you said, with toxicity, but especially low performance, everyone will go, well, he's sticking around, she's sticking around, and he's not trying that hard. Then she's not that good. Why, why do I need to try any harder, right? And, yep. you know, it's difficult to tell this anecdote without sound, sounding like I'm full of myself, but like I've helped companies interview people like, uh, you know, AAA players, 10Xers, whatever you want to call them. And they've literally said to me, Chris, I'm not sure. Are you sticking around? Like, I, I don't know that I'd be joining this company if you weren't the one talking to me. Now, again, this, this is probably sounds incredibly arrogant, but it's not about me. It's about other people that are in this position who are able to speak a certain language or have a certain resume or give a certain kind of insight, the person in the interview loop is looking for that. They're looking for that. Amir, I'm sure the same would happen for yeah. you, for Yanev, for Emil, a lot of people. And so you need to, as you said, it's very much accretive. You're, you're hundred percent right. One great person will bring in other great people, increase the bar, increase the average of the whole team. All right. Those are our thoughts about Google's new hire. What do you think? Is anybody worth $2.7 billion? Would you ever pay a huge premium for a 10X or a 100X or a 1000X? Is it worth it? Or are you quite happy with your team? You're going to learn on the job and get it done for yourselves. Jump in the comments and let us know.